Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Reiner. Joe Job is here. Hey! We're celebrating Hobbit Day, officially. Yeah, I keep wanting to call it Lord of the Rings, but it is no. te technically a different thing. Completely different. <laughs> so this is Lego The Hobbit, which just came out today, and uh, also coming out today was the Blu-ray of, what is it called? The Desolation of Smog? Yep. The yep. second chapter in... Uh, the Hobbit trilogy of movies. Yeah, which is kind of inter. I mean, I understand why they want to sync up the release of the game and the movie at the same time. So, you know, when interest is high or whatever, but it does kind of result in a weird, in a weird thing where this game only covers the, those two movies. Yeah, usually the Lego games cover all three. Yeah, whether you're talking about like the Star Wars trilogy or the Indiana Jones or or Lego Lord of the Rings from 2012. So, so some people saw me that I bought this today on, I bought the Xbox One version. That's what we're looking at here. So mm -hmm. it has cool night uh, next-gen lighting here, as you can see. <laughs> um, but people were saying, what a ripoff. It only has the two games. And, um, okay, I'm jumping in here. I'm green. Joe's blue yeah so i'm so how do they handle that is are these two chapters longer than your average uh lego game yeah i mean i i looked it up um with uh lego lord of the rings as comparison lego lord of the rings had like 17 main story missions and this one has 16 so even though it's two movies you're not getting two-thirds of the game you're not you're, getting shortchanged then. yeah no no not at all it is and i said this on my review which you can uh read on gameinformer.com that like it does. You're, you're not getting shortchanged. It is a complete game. It is a fun game, and it's just like the story is a little bit abbreviated. But um, the point I made is like, like this book is 70 years old. The movies, the movies are out. Like if you're counting on the Lego version to really deliver that story of the Hobbit, yeah, may, maybe you shouldn't be doing that anyway. But, what is this oh. tutorial? Is yeah. that what this little question mark is? I gotta click it. That's a first. All right, so it's telling us to choose someone else. So I'm going to choose this dude. Okay. Who has the hammer. So in typical, like, Lego game fashion, uh, different characters have different abilities and can interact with the environment in different ways. So, like, not everyone has this giant hammer. So when you come up to a thing that needs that, you switch to the dude with the hammer, and, you know, he gets he gets through, the, uh, through it. And? Um, and of all, I mean, of all the different dwarves, they don't all have unique abilities. Some of them have... This, you know, like there are three of three of them that can like stack up on each other, and there's one who can eat a bunch of food and then serve as like a trampoline, and one has a flail and one has a hammer, and you know, one has a bow, one can garden. So these are all different things that just at various points in the levels you 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 run into the need to like switch to those characters. And this is the very first level in the game, uh, so with no real context, we're just kind of dropped in here. Uh, to complete a level, and then I would imagine we get to an overworld? Uh, yeah, eventually. Uh, this is something I want to point out. Oh, see, it does the split screen when we get too far apart. Oh, they again. do such a good job with split screen, um, starting with the third Star Wars game. So I want to point out this. This is one of those things where you see these shiny things uh, in the level. This thing is made out of mithril. That's one of those things, like previous LEGO games, where you just can't break that on your first time through the level. So you need to wait until later, like when you can unlock characters in free play or items that can destroy blocks that you weren't able to get the first time around, and then you go replay the level, and then you get whatever secret is sort of hiding there. Yeah, and they've always done a great job with post-game. Oh, yeah. Making you play it again. That's yeah. where the real meat of the game is. Yeah, it really is. I'm surprised that, like, you know, this this game, it probably took me about, uh, probably about six or seven hours to get through <laughs> the, main, the main missions. And then I spent... You know, who knows how much time just like in the post credits, like jumping around and finding uh, finding collectibles and doing missions and unlocking those the red like the cheat bricks and all that kind of fun stuff. So there's definitely a lot of meat to this game after you've uh, after you've uh, beaten it. And I put, you know, in my top 10 games of the year, I put the first Lego Lord of the Rings game on it. Oh, yeah. Two years too. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I back in 2012. It. How does it stack up to that one? You know, it's in a lot of ways it is very much the same. You even see some well, of the same. That's fine. Yeah, and 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 uh, you see some of the same areas like Bree is here, Rivendell's here, the Shire is here. They aren't all like directly copy pasted from the previous game, but well, I know. guess they run into that problem where the overworld has to be largely the same to a degree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, parts of it, and but 
they don't, I mean, yeah, like I said, they don't recycle it uh, piece for piece, but there just are, there are a lot of similarities. Uh, obviously, a lot of recurring characters. I mean, Legolas is in the movies, so he's in the game. Look at know. us. Teamwork. We're doing it. Uh, actually, yeah, we're... So you, you stay have to there. Go, yeah, you have to go to that one. Um, All right. So the only thing I would say about this game that actually, in my mind, brings it not quite as good as Lego Lord of the Rings is that they kind of dilute that loop that I thought was so fun, where you go out and collect a bunch of mithril bricks and then create more items. Um, it was fun, but it was also a pain in the butt with how slow it was. Yeah, and they make it even more complicated in this one mm. by not only do you need mithril bricks, and I think we're getting introduced to this right now, but you also need materials, like crafting materials. So, you know, we're oh, collecting cool. we're collecting these blue things. New shinies. Collecting those red things. Sorry, I'm hitting every tutorial block. So the way it works is that you, you'll have to... Um, in order to like make certain things in the environment or craft items later on, you need a you need a certain number of different materials. In addition to just like mithril bl- bricks or whatever. And uh, but is that something you're gonna get a lot of just well, playing through the levels again? That's the thing is that like normally, normally you will, if you're just trying to get through the levels, you you won't have a problem getting through the levels. But if you're trying to do some of that cool post game stuff we were talking about. You're you're going to need to like either go out and grind, which is not fun, or you can also um, buy the materials later in the game with studs. But then then that's just a hassle because if you can buy them anyway, there's no challenge to getting them. It's just it's just a pain in the butt. So, eh, that that I was a little bit dis- disappointed in. I did it, Joe. You did it all. I made gold. <laughs> I will get the gold. You think someday they'd just pick stuff up rather than having to break it first? Ah. I mean, the gold was just sitting there in a container, and I had to wail on it to get it. I do like that. I mean, I, yeah, they they definitely hit on just the sort of magic of people really like smashing barrels and crates in games. So here's my special: I spin really fast. Yep. You have I a do power a hammer smash. Yeah, and, and you know, depending on the weapons you have, you have different um, different special moves and stuff. So this is what we're gonna do. This is explaining what that loot's for that we were talking about. So, oh jeez. Uh, on the right, it shows us what we need, I'm and just on the left, interfere with you. Or no, on the left, it shows us what we need. On the right, it shows us what we have. So we have five gold. We have five red. Four blue, five green, four diamonds. So right. now, now it's going to take us to this build screen. Or not. No, here we go. Oh, it's not the build screen. It's uh, it's forging. Okay. So pretty, is, oh, it's like a little dance mini game. That's weird. Yeah. There are more mini games this time. They're not hard. I wonder if they focus test these things. <laughs> to, to Just in games in general, like any lock picking mini game or uh, you know, opening a, a keypad panel or stuff like that. Those mm-hmm. little little games you got to play usually uh, not so great. No, I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why they're in there usually. Man, we're just working our way through this place. Yeah, we're so good at this. Are we gonna find any enemies in this level? Whoa, that's a cool shot. And that's something they did really well in the first one was the big dramatic kind of uh, sweeping shots like you see in the motion pictures. Yeah, yeah, and this one, this one is even more cinematic, I'd say, in terms of you know, like they have some more of those like, you know, the cool scenes like with the with the barrel ride down the river and stuff like that. Just some, you know, the action is framed pretty well. And who's the development team? Is this Traveler's Tales proper or is it Fusion? Uh, it's TT Games. Is sort of okay. The, so that's the, the, the main one. The then. label they go by, yeah. They sure like dancing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of singing in this? Uh, you know, not so much. I think there's some. So this is kind of before we meet with Bilbo, right? Yeah, this is this is sort of the the this backstory. Is beyond the movies. Uh, 
Yeah, this is like the backstory level where it's, you know, talking about the... Basically like the Dwarven Kingdom before Smaug shows up. Smaug or Smog? Ah, uh, they say it. They say it different ways. I think. I mean, it's S M A U G, so it's kind of. I always said smog in my mind when I read the book. Yeah, it's it's somewhere. I think it's somewhere between. Bam. We could call it Sherlock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, you really his. You can't really even tell that it's. That it's him. What, they, what are they we doing? Why did I jump somewhere? after you after you died? I don't know. <laughs> Um, oh, that actually reminds me, though, talking about the, the voice work. Um, like Lego Lord of the Rings, they sample like audio directly from the movies to provide the voice. So sometimes that's cool because it's lines that you recognize and voices that you recognize. Um, other times it's a little bit weird because like, like the audio quality can be a little different. You know, it's like in the movie... A one line might sound a little echoey and someone else might say it and it or someone else might respond and it doesn't sound echoey or you know so it just leads to oh, some okay. weird interesting um so just the quality of it then yeah it like it reminds me what of, am i doing you're not doing anything <laughs> just jamming on stuff this, this is another mini game of so this this dwarf can uh can mine objects so Ooh, look down there see that's what he does um what and the same thing in Lord of or Lego Lord of the Rings is that like the voices kind of remind me of like an internet soundboard uh, conversation, right? Where it's just like a button that has different lines, and they don't always work super well together. But okay, we don't have what we need here, do we? Nope. So oh maybe that means there we go. Means you just go smashing stuff. Now we need boards. We have boards. Okay, I did it. So now it'll take us to the build screen. Uh oh, why am I here? This is, um... Oh, this is from, uh... Is it Lego, Lego the movie? Oh, yeah, Lego the movie. That's the one. Do they tie me on this again? Yep, yep. So you see up in the upper left, you have 20,000 studs that you can get. And if you screw up, it goes down. And, you know, the faster and better you do it, the more studs you get as a reward. Yeah, I didn't find these too, uh, too great in the Lego movie. I thought they just kind of slowed it down a little bit. Uh, I don't mind them. I, for me, it's just sort of, um... Like, I, the things that you make out of these objects, I think, are cool. Like, to see to see the Lego Lord of the Rings sets being built and stuff. Um, or Lego Hobbit or whatever. Uh, like it looks cool. I don't know that gameplay-wise it adds a whole lot. but Yeah, I mean, it's just you're following, you know, I a mean, guide, basically. There are some funny things, though, where it's like, like, one of the quests later in the game is, like, there's some guy who wants a swing. So you build him, like... Like a big, like a pirate ship that's sort of on a on a swing, and you can just—he's real happy to have it, and then you just sort of sit in it and swing in this pirate ship if you want, you know. So it's like, where are we going? Uh, down. No. Oh. So there's some cool little Easter eggs attached to it, but it's not, um, you know, not game changing. Gotcha. Well, that one there was more a more significant build than. Uh than most of them from the Lego movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're almost all like that. Okay, we're getting a little audio. Why is it not working? I'm hitting X. Oh, cuts in. Yeah. So what is that? Got to see the movie? Have you, have you not seen them yet? I saw the first one. I don't remember weird stud. Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtle stone thing. <laughs> what is that? It's the Arkenstone. Okay, whatever. It's the whole. It's the whole point. Had begun to grow within him, and where sickness thrives. Oh, here he comes. Bad things will follow. Have you seen the second movie? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. No. The first they heard was a noise like a hurricane. Bullet. Sound the alarm. What is it? A dragon. Dragon. <laughs> and it's kind of funny they do the same thing that they uh, he was a sort of did in the trailers North. and stuff also where it's, you see Smaug in sort of uh, little flashes but they don't give you the full you know the full close look at him until until later this is a little weird after playing Lego the movie which everything was made of Lego bricks to go back to kind of the rendered realistic looking yeah. environments I mean I I prefer this version of it I don't know, like I think I think Middle Earth looks 
just cooler as sort of a fusion between them rather than straight up Lego bricks. And they do little touches like they're not made of Legos, but those statues down there were Lego figures. Mm -hmm. Why is it telling me why? All right. They want us to switch characters or? Uh, yeah, so it's the thing where you. Wait, they want you to be him. There. So now I have a power. There you go. Cool, a little grapple hook. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember if it's going to make us do this here or not. Oh, yeah, it will. Never mind. We'll get to it. So dwarves can break cracked plates. And there's a new mechanic in this one that's like the... It's called the, what, buddy up system or something? What? So for that big one, me and... This guy, we're gonna team up, <laughs> and you can like you can like nice. you can attack dudes this way, but you can also do it for um, puzzle stuff like this. Ooh, slow motion, dramatic uh, destruction. That's pretty cool. Yeah, a little weird, but I like it. Yeah, I mean it's it's one of those things that is is cool to do, but at the same time, it really kind of happens at. You only really need to do it at kind of prescribed moments. You know, I mean, you can do it in the levels if you want to, but. Well, I was hoping we'd show the, the overworld, but I don't think we're going to get to that here. Yeah, I mean, the overworld really isn't something that comes into play until you're talking about, uh, until, until you're getting to the end game. Because a lot of, to really fully explore that, you need access to characters that have abilities that you you don't always have ready access to during the story mode. So gotcha. it's not it's not really until you finish the game and you're able to do that kind of like free play in Middle Earth, switch to whatever characters you want whenever you want, um, that you can really start like, you know, fast traveling around the world and taking care of that stuff. All right, we're buddying it up. I'm a little bummed by all the tutorial through this. It's oh. not the Lego way. I mean, what? We played, what, 20 of these games now? Yeah. More than that? I mean, I, I guess I didn't feel like feel like this tutorial is too is too heavy. It's it's a Lego know, game, keep, and it's just sort keep of accidentally hitting them though. <laughs> I mean, that's I guess that's one of the things that they do make the tutorial stuff optional. Like if you like you hit it if you want to. Right. Well, I'm just the idiot that does it then. And we're gonna end this test chamber with this nice look at smog or s smog or smog. <laughs> However you say it. So this game's out now, and it's on pretty much everything, right, Joe? Yeah, it's out now on everything except Wii U, and it comes out on Wii U on uh, the 22nd. <sighs> Poor Wii U. The yeah. ports just keep sliding on it. Yeah. Uh, and what did you end up giving it? Uh, I ended up giving it an 8, which is a little bit lower than LEGO Lord of the Rings for me, but uh, I still had a great time with it. Still lots of, you know, the main game is fun. The post-game content's fun. So if, if, you're, if you're a fan, I definitely recommend it. All right. There you go, everyone. We'll see you next time on Test Chamber.